It's been an embarrassing couple of weeks for the Buccaneers. I ask you, Brandon, is this the end for Tom Brady? Like, is this the end in terms this is his last season or is he We're watching the downfall of his own team. Is he falling off the cliff that everybody predicted seven years ago? His squad, because he's the ultimate winner. And when I look at this offensive line, it's an experienced inside. The receivers and weapons are thin, and they can't run the football. And Mm -hmm. quite truth be told, Tom Brady's not top three quarterback. Um, I can give you he's not playing like a top three quarterback. I will not say that. Uh, He's not because he's still the best in my eyes. Um, No, I don't think it's the downfall. I still think they win the division. Uh, and you can say it's because of the division they're in and it's a weak division. That's fine. Uh, you still play the people who are in front of you and you got to win the games. Um, we just saw the last two weeks, two things that you probably didn't think were going to happen. The Steelers pulling out a win with Mitchell Trubisky against the Bucks and PJ Walker of all people beating the Buccaneers without CMC and um, uh, Robbie Anderson, not so much, but you know, uh, from what I'm seeing about with the Bucks is um, I just think that there's something going on. Um, I don't know what that is, uh, and I'm not going to speak to the things that people want to point to uh, because I don't get into people's personal lives. That's their business, not mine. Uh, but I will tell you that a big demoralizing hit, and I tweeted it when it happened, was the on the first drive. I think I believe it was the first drive of the Buccaneers game. Mike Evans drops a what 65 yard wide open touchdown pass. Uh, I mean, that that just you just shot yourself in the foot. I mean, that's a killer right there. That kills all momentum. That just destroys that. And, and Mike Evans even talked about it, I believe, in his post uh, post game interview or press conference, whatever they call it. Uh, where he said that that was a big demoralizer for the team. Like he saw it and he said that it took him a while to really get back into it. Uh, Did you know that the Buccaneers have not scored a uh, touchdown in the uh, first quarter? I believe all season, I think it is. And then right there, that would have been first touchdown in the first quarter all season, a big play uh, on the first drive too. That now, now your mood is up. Now you're hyped. You see how people don't really want to talk about momentum like that, but, you go from all the way up here to, oh, damn, wow. Uh, and listen, I, I I don't remember if the court, I think Jamel Dean was ruled out of this game before the game. And I think Sean Murphy Button got injured in the game, or I'm getting them mixed up, one of the two. One of them was ruled out before the game, I believe, and the other one uh, got injured in the game, if I'm getting that correctly. So that's two of your top corners. Uh, I, I actually, it might not be Jamel Dean that was injured. It, it's the other guy, um, Carlton Davis, the third, yes. Uh, I think Jamel Dean played all, all the entire game. But you're out your top two corners. Um, Shaq Barrett, where are you? You have two sacks all season. That was in one game in total, kind of like the Chandler Jones five-sack game in the first game of last season, and then he did jack all for the rest of the season. Where are you, Shaq Barrett? They paid you all that money. Devin White is playing good. Uh, Levante David is doing the best he can, especially at 32 years of age and a lot of miles on those legs and that body. Uh, the offensive line we know is ravaged. We know all these squat. We, we knew all these things. I'm just laying it out. We knew these things going into the season, right? Right. Uh, um, um, Jensen, the center, uh, the center got injured before the season. Uh, obviously Donovan Smith got injured in the first game. I believe he high percentage double. He's back. Um, Akeem Hicks got injured, I think, in the third game of the season. Uh, he's been a, a big loss because they don't have Sue anymore, and he was a big plug, but they, they got him to really fill that role. He's been injured. Uh, they're hopefully – both of those guys are going to get back, Jensen and uh, uh, Hicks. I think they're going to be coming back this season, Hicks before Jensen. We know – Chris Godwin, I, I spoke about it uh, in our last episode, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it before the season. I, I, I'd be surprised if I didn't, that I said Chris Godwin is obviously coming off a torn ACL, and it's, it, he doesn't really look the same as he did before the injury. I, I think anybody with eyes can see that, that he doesn't look the same. He doesn't have that same burst. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Best Amp. When it comes to sports betting, 
Best Stamp is changing the game. You want to maximize your return. And with the Best Stamp app, all you have to do is download it and sign up on their different affiliate sports books. And you can see all the best odds given straight to you in one single place. The visual tools are very helpful. And by the end of the year, you can use it for accounting. You can get all the analytics that you'll need so that you can bet like a pro. Be sure to use our referral code at WiseGuys, W-I-S-E-G-U. Why, yes. Thank you to Best Stamp for supporting us. And as always, back to the show. And then last but not least, the the wrong game. Leonard Fournette, where are you? Uh, you had that insane game the first game of the season against Dallas, and that's looking like it was, you know, not that big of a deal because Dallas is, I think, a bottom five uh, rushing defense in all, the, in all NFL this year. So where are you? You've given them – Nothing. Uh, they really have, I think they have two active running backs, or they only play two running backs. It's uh, Rashad White and Leonard Fournette. Keyshawn Vaughn, if I'm getting his name correctly, he played last year. Where is he? Uh, Giovanni Bernard got injured, but they need to get. I, I texted you, John, and I said, there's two moves that I'm looking at, right? Uh, both are on the trade block, but the two guys that I'm looking at, right, is one guy that played with Tom Brady. Uh, back in New England for one year, um, a speedster. And if you didn't know this, uh, I found out this th uh, this afternoon. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the 31st ranked team in speed this season. They're the second slowest team in the NFL. You know who number one is? Indianapolis. I should tell you something. So this is an old team. Brandon Cooks from the Houston Texans, speedster. If you bring him in, I know he's got a, a – it's not the friendliest contract next year. I think his base salary is 18 million next year with an opt out after that. But this year is is workable. I think you would be able to work it. I think the Bucks have five million dollars in cap space, if I'm not mistaken, uh, give or take. Uh, but Brandon Cooks would be instantly you'd instantly supply him a deep threat that this team sorely needs. Obviously, without A B, they don't have that deep threat. Kiss Goblins coming off the torn ACL. Mike Evans is not really known for deep, but he can get deep, but he, you know, not for, known for it. Brandon Cooks can come right in, and, and he's got that chemistry with Tom for that one year. Tom really spoke highly of him that one year that uh, he played with him. He was a 1,000-yard receiver for Tom. And the second guy is Kareem Hunt out of the uh, Cleveland Browns. Uh, that name just popped up recently. I think I saw it today, actually, uh, that he's, uh, he's available. And his cap is not that bad. You could, you could work with that. Um, bringing him in. I think obviously he's not playing as well this season, but being the lead back in Tampa Bay as a receiving back, we know what he can do uh, running the ball in and out of the backfield as a receiver. I think both those moves are one of those moves that if you can make, if you're Tampa Bay, you make that move. And they both are one of them supply a much needed injection of a, a spark in this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. No, Brandon, start the season, I said. The Saints can win this division. It's not an absolute shoe in for the Buccaneers. And you told me, John, what's the concern here with Tampa Bay? What is there to worry about with this team not winning 12 or 13 games? And I said, you know, there's not quite one specifically, but there are things that can become issues. The interior offensive line, Todd Bowles' defense in recent weeks has been very much nowhere near what it was last year. And then, like you talk about the weapons, Brandon Cooks, he has now after 2023, but the dead cap will be 25 to 27 million the following two years after this year. So for the Buccaneers, that would be a pretty heavy price to take on a player that realistically does not solve all of their issues. Right now, I don't think Tom Brady is the problem in Tampa Bay, but we're seeing he can't carry a unit the way a Patrick Mahomes maybe can. You look at the Chiefs and the lack of weapons and really just him being able to make it work with a committee of guys. You compare that to Tampa lack. Bay. He's got, a tra he's got Travis Kelsey, who's one of the great – he's entering all the he's, No, but all, not only that, he's entering the conversation as one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Like, we start – we got to have start having those conversations. That, that sure. That's – all pro is a level, John. That's a great level. One of the greatest of all times, that's a, never, that's a different level. Sure, you're right. Juju right. Smith-Schuster coming off probably his best game as a Kansas City Chief. Uh I'm not, I think he's a very good number two. I think you would agree with that being a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Um, his running back core is much better than Tampa Bay's. I mean, they've got a couple guys that can do, John. I wouldn't go that far. Who's, who's, what is Tom, what is one of Tom's best weapons as a, as a quarterback? His receiving backs, right? The Danny Woodheads, the Shane Vereens, 
the um oh my god i'm blanking out a bunch of names but you know what i mean james white, james white. Sorry. um jared mccann does he not su- uh, 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 supply a spark for that kansas city team when he's in the game ceh he can catch the ball and run i know i'm forgetting one of their running back names i think they got a third one out there when i watch Tim kansas is- city I feel it's more so the scheme that can. That's also true too. Andy Reid is a much better play caller than Byron Leftwich, yes. And that has been an issue for Tampa Bay as well. Two new coordinators mm-hmm. defensively. You got Larry Foote and Casey Rogers. Keep in mind these coordinators are new, and I feel like for Tom Brady, you lose these last couple of games. It, it is rough. But the damning thing about the Buccaneers is their next seven games are against the Ravens at home, the Rams at home, the Seattle Seahawks who. In this current point of time, are a more balanced playoff caliber team. That's at home. But then you got the Browns. They're not going to have Deshaun Watson at that point, November 27th. The Saints at home, the San Francisco 49ers in San Fran, and then the Cincinnati Bengals at home. That's a tough schedule. And if you mm-hmm. split and let's say you go three and four in that stretch, if they start the year six and eight, it's over. You're not making the playoffs at nine and eight. And I think, well, this division will still be up in the air. I think the Falcons are going to be right there with them. And if the Buccaneers are having to play their way through the wild card with all their issues so far this year, their first round exit. And that right there may be the lasting image for Tom. The last one we think about this unforgettable, this forgettable season, which many expected early on to be a Super Bowl run.